What do you get when you cross an American muscle car selling a ridiculous amount of cars and a young car company trying to get their foot in the door to the American market? You get a masterpiece. I am Mark Roden and this is the deep dive on the Toyota Celica. In order to fully understand the history of the Celica, we need to first look at the Ford Mustang, because without this car, Toyota never would have made the Celica. The Mustang was targeted towards the younger generation and was a small coupe but with a big heart, and Toyota knew they had to follow up. So they immediately started production on the Celica. It was exactly the same as the Mustang in terms of what they were selling it for. It was a small coupe car that was based primarily on a sedan chassis and was being sold to the younger people and it worked people were loving the first gen celica so much we sadly don't have any accurate sales records but most articles are saying they were selling well over 50,000 models per year which back in the 70s is pretty good the car was offered with a lot of different engines and trim levels but the most impressive is the 2.2 liter 20r inline four that managed to make a very nice 97 horsepower which may sound very small and it is pretty small but remember the car itself was very small only weighing around 21 100 pounds and paired with a front engine rear wheel drive layout meant that this car was ready to rumble ladies and gentlemen uh, let's get ready to rumble three years after the launch of the first generation celica in 1970 they would release to the world the very first ever lift back body style this was technically a fastback styled hatchback which has lots of backs in it but toyota wanted to be a little fancy boy and make a whole new word for it so here we are now in terms of actual performance it was exactly the same as the coupe celica same motor same chassis same horsepower except now it was a little bit heavier at around 2400 pounds which sure means it's a little worse for performance but it looked a whole lot cooler so i can't blame them but those crazy boys knew they still had so much left to give to the world and a car company by the name of nissan were trying to one up them with their nissan z so they made it even better and in 1977 would release the second generation the new toyota celica liftback a car which meets or exceeds all 1980 federal fuel economy and safety standards an aerodynamic work of art with the best toyota engineering features of our time a durable car built to last the trip to your tomorrow the new celica was here and it really proved to the people what they were thinking all along the celica is going to be toyota's sports car in terms of performance to be honest with you it didn't really change much the gt models were still only pushing 97 horsepower the engine was now a 2.4 liter instead of a 2.2 liter and they made it look a whole lot different but if you think that's all that happened you are sadly mistaken during this time toyota was working on something incredible something freaking jaw dropping something that would shake the japanese sports car industry for years to come the toyota celica super The Celica Supra came out in 1978 and was originally called the Toyota Celica XX and was everything great about the Celica GT but now even better. It had a 2.6 liter inline 4 now and in America it made 110 horsepower but in the great land of Japan it made an amazing 140 horsepower. On top of that the car was still being sold as a front engine rear wheel drive coupe which only continued to make sales numbers go up. At this point every single Japanese car company was trying to build something to defeat the wonderful Celica but every single time they just kept falling flat on their face except one Nissan with their damn Nissan Z. But this only continued to push Toyota further and further to make the next generation something amazing. Nice car! There's a new Toyota that's been getting a lot of notice lately. Nice car. The new Toyota Celica. Nice car. A Celica that carries on the sporty Celica line in space age fashion with wind tunnel sculptured lines nice and five speed overdrive, a two liter propulsion car. system. All the stuff that makes Celica the right stuff. Nice car. The third gen or A60 Celica would be launched in 1981 and was once again even better. The car looked a whole lot more aggressive from the A40 and the power was there to back it up. It came now with a 2.4 liter inline 4 called the 22R and it was making a very decent 113 horsepower in the GT model. There was even a trim level called the 1600 GT that was paired with the legendary 4AGE. 
That, my friends, is the same motor that they put in the AE86 Corolla. That is the damn car that delivers tofu very quickly. And it makes RX-7s cry in the, in the tow gaze. And if all that potential still wasn't enough for you, they gave us another Celica Supra. This time coming with a massive 2.8 liter inline 6, making a very good 168 horsepower. It was a true race car at this point, and Toyota proved that when they brought it to the damn World Rally Championship, WRC for short, and absolutely rocketed around the tracks. <laughs> This little rally monster from Toyota would be the first of what's to come from the already pretty successful Celica line. They called it the Celica Twin Cam Turbo, big name, and it was made to compete in the infamous Group B Rally Racing Championships, which in case you don't know, Group B was a group of some of the most insane and fast cars to ever lap around rally stages. Group B only lasted for a short period of time due to how incredibly unsafe it was to have bystanders standing within 5 feet of cars barreling down crunchy back roads at speeds of over 120 miles per hour. But the cars that came out during that time are still to this day talked about as some of the most well-rounded rally cars. You got the Audi Sport Quattro S1, the Ford RS200, and the Lancia Delta HF Integrale Evo, once again another very long name, just to name a few. But even cars like this little Toyota Twin Cam Turbo were stuff to write home about. It came with a 1.8 liter inline 4 turbocharged motor, making a blistering 320 horsepower, but it was still rear wheel drive, which made it not that competitive against the all wheel drive monsters of Group B. But even with that handicap of being rear wheel drive, it still took home WRC trophies year after year in 1982, 83, 84, 2 in 85, and 2 in 86. But sadly, in August of 1985, the Celica was changed completely. Totally redesigned to give you more. A front wheel drive car that truly handles like a sports car. Let the electronically fuel injected 16 valve twin cam dazzle you. The fourth generation Celica came out and was now completely different. They had dropped the Celica Supra from the lineup and instead made the Supra its own thing, which as we all know went on to become a legend. But sadly, due to that, the Celica would suffer. Toyota now had their high horsepower rear wheel drive GT car and it was called the Supra. And the Celica would be turned into a car to hopefully target Honda's reign of terror on the front wheel drive lightweight sports car market. Meaning there was going to be no more rear wheel drive Celica. That's, that, that's horrible. However, all hope is not lost because just one year after the initial launch of the fourth generation, they would release the best thing to happen to the Celica, the Celica GT4. This new and improved Celica would come with a 2 liter turbocharged inline 4 that pushed out a crazy 190 horsepower, but most importantly, it was now all wheel drive, buddy old pal. All these add-ons made the Celica worth talking about again, and even though they dropped the rear-wheel drive Celica from the lineup, the GT models were still pretty cool little front-wheel drive track cars, and the world was still pretty happy. So all around, I'd say the 4th gen Celica was a great success. I get the step, he must get the step. I get the clock radio, he cannot afford. Great success. The 5th gen Celica came into the world in 1989 and it was once again just better than the last generation in every way. The base model or GT models now were making close to 160 horsepower and the GT4 was even faster. It still had the 2 liter turbo inline 4 but now they managed to bump the power all the way up to 220 which is pretty freaking nuts for a small all-wheel drive rally monster with all the suspension upgrades that you could possibly want and a very influential four-wheel steering like we've seen on some other legends like the third gen prelude or 3000 gt vr4 but the americans were sadly starting to get bored of it americans like going fast not a lot of them care too much about rally racing and when they were given the option to choose between the celica gt4 or the mark III supra most of them just went with the Mark III Supra, meaning sales for our beloved Celica were starting to fall despite constantly getting better and better. But Toyota knew this and went out to give us another absolute monster to tell our kids about when electric cars take over. Welcome to the world, the sixth generation Celica GT4. I hate to 
sound like a broken record here, but once again, Toyota saw how great their car was and somehow managed to make it even better. The GT models were still front wheel drive only and were now just making under 140 horsepower, but sadly due to Americans just not buying the all track Celicas, which by the way, I forgot to mention, all track is the American version of GT4. Us in America were no longer offered the GT4 model. This is heartbreaking news because the GT4 was now everything Toyota had been working at since the start of the Celica in 1970. It had four wheel ABS, fully upgraded freaking everything. It still had the same two liter turbo in line four, but it now made 251 horsepower. And most importantly, it had a really cool spoiler. This generation of GT4 would go on to win a ridiculous amount of WRC championships, all while wearing that iconic Castrol red, green, and white paint job. Toyota had finally done it. They made the perfect rally car from a perfect car company, and then they killed it. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 The seventh generation Celica would come out in 1999 and would shock the world with the design. It looked completely different and most people would agree that it looked pretty good. But then they announced to the world that the GT4 model would not be brought back. Instead, only the GT or GTS model was available all around the globe. This one hurt. The GT4 up until this point was a name that rally drivers would fear on the stages, but now it was just something that they would have to look up to. The GTS still was a very good little sports car though, making a very nice 180 horsepower, but it was front wheel drive. It had a bunch of economy parts on it, and it was nowhere near as legendary as the GT4 once was, which made all the Celica fans kind of talk bad about it, pretty much tainting its reputation and making everybody else that doesn't really like Celicas that much also call it bad which to this day, I still don't think it deserves it, to be honest. The 7th gen Celica is still an incredible Celica. It's a fun, lightweight, great handling little track car that you don't have to worry about braking. And if they had brought back the GT4 model, I have no doubt in my mind that it would have been better than the last. But sadly, we will never know, because just like every other legend to come from Japan, the Toyota Celica was killed off in 2006 completely, and we have never seen another one since. So, if you're watching this video as someone who doesn't like the Celica and talks bad about it simply because they don't understand what it was built for, I really hope I showed you what made the Celica so great. And if there is one thing you take away from this video, it is to always appreciate the sports cars that we have now. Because in today's day and age, when everyone else is just driving some crossover SUV or a pickup truck, the little sports cars like the Celica need us, the car community, to come together and show the car companies that we want them back. Alright guys, that's the end of this video. Um, I'm recording on my phone right now. I have no idea how the quality is going to be. This is me like looking at what I'm looking at right now, but the camera's over here. Don't ask. The for GoPro is having so many issues right now and I can't, I just, I can't deal with it. So this is me uh, talking to you guys, just giving you guys a quick little outro. I hope you guys enjoyed, obviously. If you did, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know another car that you'd like to see a deep dive on. Um, also, this one was really hard to do research on because there's seven generations of it and there's a lot of reading for it. Um, I did not expect that to be honest and so there is a good chance that I might have made a mistake or two and if so just leave me a comment down below I'd really appreciate it and obviously other people that are looking to know about the Celica would also appreciate it so if I make a mistake and you notice it please let me know in the comments I'm sure I made a couple in today's video but this is just a you know fun video so I hope you guys don't get too upset about that but either way though let me know what other deep dive you'd like to see and Das Madania have a nice night. Also, Merry Christmas. I forgot to tell you guys that, but Merry Christmas. I know it's a little, it's a day late, but Merry Christmas.